Okay, welcome back. This final video is going to show you how to adjust the backlash and tighten down the worm gear assemblies for both declination and right ascension. The process is exactly the same. I'm only going to show you on declination because it's easier to see for us, but the process is ex exactly the same for right ascension. So just repeat it for both of them. So what I have here is I have the assembly all locked into place, kind of firm, and it's laid down. It's nice and stable for me to work with here. And I put one of the slow motion controls on the worm gear here itself. Doesn't matter which side you put it on, whatever is more accessible for you. So if I take this and I just rattle everything around, you can see all that motion. Okay, so that's the housing here being loose, the worm gear rattling on the worm wheel, everything else. So this is locked. If I loosen this, now everything spins freely. The axis spins freely. But if I lock the axis, all this motion now is coming from the worm assembly. So think of the worm gear and the worm wheel as a pair of teeth like this. You want them to be lined up just perfectly that they come together smoothly. Okay? If you open up them about, then what's going to happen is they're going to rattle like this. If you go too far, they're going to skip on each other and not, not actually move. So if you have it too loose, they're going to rattle. But if you go too tight, they're going to bind and they're not going to be able to turn. So you want to find that magic point where they move smoothly and there's almost no rattling motion. If you go too far out or too far in from that point, you have problems. So that motion is, in this view, up and down. That's the worm moving up and down. The long screws here lock the assembly in place. Short screws here in the middle screw, if you tighten the middle screw, it lifts the housing up away from the worm wheel. That's like our teeth opening up. So it'll make things looser. If you tighten that, so if you tighten that down, it brings the worm up. If you loosen that and tighten these outer pieces, it brings the worm down and makes things tighter in there. So you want to find that point when they all come together. So the trick here is for right now, take your long ones and just to see where we stand, you can get that lock out of the way for now. Just make everything just barely snug, okay? So we have four bolts, just make them snug. This middle one is loose. So what happens is I cannot turn the worm right now. Everything is bound up because this was loose enough. The, the central screw was loose. So the housing is now down tight against the worm and I can't spin anything. So what we need to do is loosen it and bring the whole assembly up and lock it into place. So the trick is, this is an iterative process. Go ahead and loosen these side ones. Oh, maybe half a turn. Okay. And these top ones... Go ahead and loosen them about a turn for now. So now what we need to do is we need to take the worm and we need to pull it up away. So to do that, we tighten the central screw. So let's just, right now, since we don't know how far loose it is, let's just take it real quickly and just till we feel some sort of tension. You can even put your finger here and feel the housing starting to move. So there we go. So if I tighten it right to there, I can feel the housing moving. So if I start there, let's start there and we'll see where we fit. So make these just, just barely snug, barely snug. So now I can turn the worm and the assembly moves now like we expect, but it's somewhat stiff. So we can probably make things a little bit looser. But remember, if we make things too loose, then there's a rattle and things start to have problems there. So it's just loosen everything so that things can move. Let's take this one and we're going to go just a quarter turn. Let's just tighten everything up again and see where we sit now. Okay, so we lock it in place. So now... It still feels pretty tight, but one way to check the rattle is grab the two housings. 
and I'm going to be doing this. Okay, I'm going to rotate them. I want to feel if there's any sort of clicking, or can I feel it moving? That's the teeth binding, uh, bouncing back and forth. So, at this point, I cannot loosen everything up just a bit. And we'll try again. So this is an iterative process. So let's take this and go. Let's go another quarter turn, bringing the housing up again, off the worm wheel. And obviously, as we pull this up, these need to be loose for it to move. So these have to loose, loosen at least as much as this moves. Now it's still pretty, pretty tight in here. I still can't feel anything. So let's give it a little bit more. Let's let's go outside what we think the range might be. Let's turn this a whole half turn. And I can feel that binding. So that means that these need to be loosened up a little bit. I can feel that binding up just a bit there. There we go. That's a half turn tighter. And you're going to feel things starting to change in these other screws as well because the whole housing now is moving around. So the way they fit is going to change. Now that feels very, very, very easy to move, very loose, okay? The problem is I can rattle this now. I don't know if you can see it in the video on here, but there's a distinctive rattle. So that means we've gone too far. And when this is that loose, that's what you feel. So that was a half turn. Let's see what happens if we cut that distance back a quarter turn. Now we're going to loosen the set screw, quarter turn. That means the housing can move further down, so these have to be then tighten up a little bit to compensate. Okay. So now this feels smooth and clear. It's easier to turn than it did two times ago, and it doesn't seem sloppy like it did the last round, and if I grab it and check, there's just a little bit of rattle there. So let's go back, try one more round. This was a quarter turn back. Let's go back another eighth of a turn. About there. Well, there's a little bit of rattle there too. Another eighth turn. Now the other thing is, things are going to change quite a bit when we finally tighten these all the way up. So now we're back to where it's a little bit tighter in here, but there's no rattle. So that was an eighth of a turn. We could go maybe that much. Split the difference. See what that does. This feels smooth, and there's only the very slightest rattle when I force it. So depending on what you're looking for out of your mount, this might be fine for most people. You can always, I mean, this is an iterative process, depending on how much time you want to put in. This is now, what, one thirty-second of a turn? The rattle is gone. This feels smooth. And I might like might leave it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take these and make them feel slight. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use so right now I want to bring the housing up just enough to lock against these. So I need to tighten this. So I've got to that's all I'm going to get. I'm not even going to really tighten it at all. So, just so I feel that those two are now, one is 
One set of screws is pushing down, one's pulling up, and the whole thing locks into place. These side screws, I'm going to tighten down a bit more than we have. Just make sure these feel tight where they are. So now once you tighten everything down, now it feels like it's binding a bit. And that's similar to what we found when we were doing the axis adjustments. So sometimes when you get everything tightened down and it pushes it beyond where you were expecting. So now what we want to do, since we know that's going to happen, we want to take these, we want to just loosen them a very slight bit, tighten the middle one that much, see where we sit now. The other thing is that generally these screws don't have to be muscled down like you're a gorilla. So if you find that maybe leaving them snug and not very tight gives you a better feel, maybe that's a better option. There we go. So that feels pretty good right there. I give these just a little bit more tightness. That still feels good there. I don't have any rattling. Things feel smooth. They're a little tight, but it'll loosen up. But it's not that bad. I mean, it takes fingertips are moving the whole thing. That's not bad at all. And it's very easy, since these are all exposed, if you take it out and use it for a bit and you say, boy, it still feels a little bit tighter than I prefer, you can always go through and loosen these up just a slight bit. And the easiest way is you just take your end ones and just bring them more towards snug than tight. Sometimes that's all it takes, so now it feels much better. So, play around with these and get a sense of how it fits. The exact same process occurs on the right ascension side. It feels the same. The, gear, the worm gear and all that are similar in size. So, go through the same process for right ascension. And your mount will be ready. Uh, put your telescope on and take it out and use it. So, like I said, there will be one last video where I will show the installation and use of the dual axis drive system that can come with this. It's an aftermarket accessory from Celestron uh, and it, it gives you um, fingertip motor control for both axes. Otherwise, we're complete. You now have a CG4 that you have taken apart, cleaned up inside, rebuilt, put some new grease in, checked the status of all the parts inside, and when you put it back together again, you did so carefully with all the backlash, it should behave much, much better than what you had before. And all said and done, this was a pretty cheap process. Uh, now, this whole thing can be done with heavier telescopes, heavier mounts. And in fact, I want to make a video for the next step up, which is a CG5. At some point, I'll do that. But you also hit a point when you get to very big mounts and things get a little more delicate. You have ball bearings inside. Uh, you have uh, the, the measurements are more accurate. That's where Axis Squared comes in. We have the talent and the tools to rebuild and blueprint your mounts from this size all the way up to professional uh, small observatory size. So when you move up from your CG4 to something bigger and more complex and need it adjusted, be sure to contact us for the work. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Please keep an eye on our YouTube channel for updates on new videos and be sure to check out our website and our Instagram and all of our social media and see what we're working on next. Thank you.